Welcome to the program. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Mark Goldberg, and this is Mark Vlogs Watches. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we jump into the meat and potatoes of this critically important video, let's go ahead and get the quick fist watch check out of the way. And here she is. Hey guys, I'm a dog trainer and I'm also an author. You can support this channel by buying a copy of my book, The Art of Training Your Dog, or my first book, Let Dogs Be Dogs, available wherever books are sold. Throw a like on this video and please subscribe so we can do it again. And now the fist watch check. Today, guys, I am wearing a Seamaster in 41 glorious millimeters with a ceramic wavy laser cut dial. Omega, Omega. And I think that this watch is probably maybe the very best one that I could possibly wear to discuss the, the single most important mistake that 99% of us are going to make, which will harm our value of our collections, will cost us money. And quite frankly, though I am making this video for you, I am probably right there along with you in the seventh rung of hell. <laughs> committing this committing this same sin repeatedly as though there were no redemption for me. But maybe there is for you, so at least we should talk about it. Okay, so what's the worst sin that you could possibly commit? Is it buying on the secondary market when you should hold out for the AD? Is it buying watches on a whim off of eBay? Is it waking up in the middle of the night and uh, for some reason sleepwalking your way through Amazon and uh, finding that you've ordered something that's coming in two days because you're a Prime member? I've literally, <laughs> I've literally done all of those things. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not even counting dr <laughs> drunk buying. Um, you know, I, I would say the Negroni has purchased uh, m more than one you know, more than one watch for me. And although the, oh, the, how about the rebuy? And if you haven't yet, save yourself. Learn, learn from my example. The rebuy is when you sell off a watch because you're not rotating it enough, and then you miss it, and then you buy it back. Um, and inevitably, you're going to lose money doing that because you'll pay, let's say you sold it on eBay, you'll pay fees on eBay, shipping, you know, all that nonsense. And then when you rebuy it, you're going to pay tax and uh, probably the value of it has gone up a little bit in the couple of years while you were obsessing on this missed watch. There's just a whole lot of ways to lose value on your watch collection. But today I'm gonna focus on the, the, the daddy, the mother of, of all mistakes that you could possibly make, and that is boredom. Guys, we're, we're dudes, okay? We're, we're, we're bros, we're bros, we're men, we're dudes. And uh, we're, e we're easily amused, but we're also easily bored. They say the only difference between men and boys are the price of their toys. And isn't that the truth? So let me take you back right now to your childhood. Okay, now depending on your age, actually, I gotta tell you, YouTube analytics tells me your ages. And right now, uh, there is one 17 year old boy listening to me, um, and there are like 500, 62 to 70 year old men <laughs> listening. So most of you who are listening to me will be within my generational, you know, age, although there's a number of like 30 to 40 year olds too. Well, welcome aboard, guys. If you're in the 30 to 40 year range bracket, maybe I can save you some trouble. But if you're in my generation, you know, what were the toys that we had when we were kids? Rock'em Sock'em Robots? Who were, tell me in the comments the toys that you remember from your mis misbegotten youth. Certainly there were baseball cards. We didn't, we, you know what? We had to walk uphill to school both ways in the rain, barefoot. We didn't have Pokemon cards. We had baseball cards. However, I will say we had our dollies. We had dolls. Now those were not Barbies typically, uh, but they were GI Joes and there were a number of GI Joes and you might trade, buy, sell, um, gosh, I was, uh, I was really not that into comic books. I was kind of a little bit more into baseball cards, but my friend Arthur was super into comics and I, and we used to bet, oh, we would flip. We, there was a game where you would flip pennies to see who could get the penny to stay closest to the wall. And we would bet, well, we didn't have money other than the pennies. So we would bet our possessions. And I remember, I remember the time my Arthur, my best friend lost his entire comic book collection. It was hundreds and hundreds of them. 
he lost them to me on on a flipped penny of course you know two days later i gave them back because i felt so bad but the reality of it is is that whatever toy we had even as kids we didn't treasure them we became somewhat careless of them as we got used to them and even a little bored think of toy story um now, what was it, Andy? And, and uh, what was the cowboy's name? I don't remember. But, you know, Andy got tired of his cowboy. He, he, that was his fit. Someone tell me, for God's sakes, in the, in the comments. What was the name of the damn cowboy? And, uh, you know, Tom Hanks plays the voice. Toy Story. But Andy was his treasured toy, and then eventually he got tired of him. And, you know, he put him under the bed, and adventures ensued. We get bored with our stuff. There's just no way around it. And as we grow up, okay, we get the car. And that we thought we wanted and then a couple years later eh, it doesn't have enough horsepower and we trade up and in the trade we lose or we turn in off of the lease early and in the churning of the lease we lose it is male human nature to have a certain a level of attention deficit disorder squirrel that's how we are with stuff why would it be any different with watches and in fact when you throw a touch of ocd into the watch game now that's super dangerous because not only will you quickly become bored but you will look at a watch and you will quickly discern its fatal flaw okay and then it'll just ruin the experience for you even though you liked the damn thing until somebody oh man my friend blue blue drew in pattaya thailand you know you know who you are and you know what you've done any watch i send him he'll go ah oh, it's beautiful mate you know he's a brit he goes it's beautiful he goes but uh oh what's what's with the font there on that you know on that 300 uh you know meter that font it's just it's just ugly and then you know i'll look closer at this two-point font and i'll see ah the bastard he's right that's an ugly font and then i won't see anything but that okay these are mistakes, a little OCD coupled with boredom. So how did that affect me with this guy right here? It's because honestly, guys, in some ways, I would say this Omega is nearly, there is no perfect watch. Airplane, squirrel, there is no perfect watch, but boy, you know, we can come kind of close and, and for its price point, this is an expensive guy, but like, look at everything that it has to offer, okay? For me, what's the killer? For you, it'll be something else. But for me, it's these skeleton hands. They just really, <laughs> they just really irritate me. And the reason is, see those cute little thin strips of loom? Well, I wanted a watch. I, I, I guess I would prefer a watch that had like stronger loom on the hands. So uh, I bought this watch from um, uh, my, my buddy, Uncle Bill, let's call him. And um, and I wore it a little while, and then the, the skeleton hands just kind of ticked me off. Because it had a little sentimental value to me that I purchased it off a friend of mine, rest in peace. Because it had a little sentimental um, value to me, I didn't do what I usually do when I get bored with something like this, and that is sell it on eBay, trade it for somebody else, or just, you know, just offload it out of boredom. I kept this watch, and let me tell you what, this thing sat in a drawer for at least three years. And I, I kid you not, sat in a drawer for maybe maybe three, maybe even four years. And I just never, hardly ever wore the thing. And then one day I came across it, you know, in the collection and I thought, oh, that's not so bad. Let me, let me, I'm a night sleeper. I am a watch sleeper. Eh, by the way, er, a little deviation here. Are you a sleeper with watches? Cause like I, I sleep with them. And that is the whole reason that these skeleton hands bug me. I have a little UV flashlight right by the side of my bed and I just give them a quick tick, which charges them up. Like my, my Seiko Tuna hit it once, charged for the entire eight hour night. Um, a lot of them I got to do it in the middle of the night when I get up for a little piddle. Cause I'm a gentleman of a certain age. Um, well, I was very surprised to find that these little tiny strips of loom, they do glow a very, very long time. Boredom made me put this watch away. Sentimentality made me hold on to it. Um, and now that I've pulled it out, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to wear the heck out of this thing. Okay, I have commitment issues, guys, and you know it. So, uh, you know, talk to me again in another three days. Maybe I will have rotated this out and it'll be back in a sock drawer. I'm a little unsure, but I can tell you this. In the three or four years that this Omega Seamaster sat in a drawer, I probably churned and burned my way through a lot of watches that I should have really either not bought in the first place or I shouldn't have let boredom affect my decision to buy or sell. I'm going to wrap it up on this. 
I keep making the same damn mistakes. So in the next, well, tomorrow will be new watch day. Um, you know, I, 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 am, uh, I am a little bit of a Seiko lover. Random Rob, I blame you for my attraction to the Seiko monster. And it is an attraction which comes and goes. When I have one, I get bored with it because it's a Seiko, it's kind of lower tier Seiko. So you don't get the same quality feel when you wear a monster on the one hand. On the other hand, it's a very fun watch from the design and visual perspective. So, you know, you, you have to enjoy a thing for what it is. I mean, you cannot eat filet mignon every day. There is a lot of value to the cheeseburger. Um, filet mignon, Rolex, rack of lamb, um, the Seiko monster, cheeseburger, but I, I, I'm American. I like, I like me a cheeseburger. Put bacon on top of it, better yet. Um, but those stupid Seiko monsters have just priced themselves into oblivion. I mean, an orange one is like a thousand dollars, something ridiculous. So I have an homage, a Heimdaller coming of the orange one looks exactly like the second gen monster. I mean, exactly. In fact, I think they do it better because the clasp is way better milled instead of stamped. And instead of mineral glass, it has sapphire in it. So, yeah, technically it's better. And then uh, a Seiko SKX is coming off of eBay. One I ordered in the middle of the night off of Amazon. The other, I actually thought about it on eBay. Why? Why do I need two more kind of classic but lower end Seiko watches when I have like plenty of luxury level watches? And the reason is I'm a gentleman of a certain age. I may get up in the middle of, in the, middle of the night because, you know, I got to hit the bathroom. But I'm still a boy at heart. I get bored with my stuff and I, I need to constantly add more. Is it a problem? Is it a bad habit? Is it a sickness? I don't know, guys. Let's talk about it in the comments, but thanks for listening. This is Goldberg. Peace out. Paint the sky your favorite color.